Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, sorry, here is in a natural Clark Kent curl going on in front. Can't have that. Don't want anyone getting me confused with the Man of Steel. But uh, <coughs> today, or rather, I don't know, maybe we're, we'll talk about more stuff today. So it might be a little, little, little premature to just say the only thing we're going to talk about today because talk about some other stuff today is uh we're gonna get back to talking about uh how i use various uh community tools related to sql server troubleshooting and uh i believe so far we've talked about sp human events and sp quickie store sorry sp underscore human events and sp underscore quickie store and uh, this one, I'm going to continue a li to talk about uh, my stuff, because my stuff is the most important. And uh, we're going to talk about the importance of turning on the remote DAC, the dedicated admin connection, when we might need to troubleshoot a SQL server that's having some issues and uh, the store procedure that we're going to be talking about for the next couple of few videos is going to be SP underscore pressure detector which is one of my favorites it is nice well it used to be short and sweet <laughs> slowly has accumulated some uh, some some length to it not so much girth just just kind of length and uh, but it's all useful useful length and useful girth so that's good. I don't want useless length or girth. I've got some useless girth. SP underscore pressure detector does not, though. Uh, one thing I discovered recently is that if this whole SQL Server thing doesn't work out, I'm going to get super into shadow puppets on the green screen. i got to figure out the lighting a little bit better, but you get the idea. You're in for a real treat. Oh, Microsoft goes bankrupt. Shadow puppets it is. So the first uh, thing, so SP Pressure Detector has code similar or exactly like this baked into it uh, so that it will tell you if the remote DAC is enabled or not. So it'll, it'll do a check to see if this is set correctly. When this is set correctly, we will have uh, remote admin connections but the value in use will be one instead of zero. Right now it's zero. We don't have that turned on, and I don't have that turned on because uh, I want to show you how to turn it on. And then maybe even how to use it should be a very useful thing, wouldn't it? So right now, uh, this is not turned on. And one thing that is, is good to know about this, and I've got to figure out the right way to move here, is that this is not an advanced option. If this were an advanced option, you might on your server need to uh, run SP configure to show advanced options before uh, s turning this on. So uh, actually, one thing that I do want to, that I've always found kind of interesting is if you execute SP configure with no parameters sent into it, it will just list out all of the configuration options uh, it will not tell you all of the stuff <laughs> that uh, selecting from the sys.configurations dynamic management view returns, like if an option is advanced and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of weird, I think. Maybe maybe SP configure could just do a select star from sys.configuration instead of messing around with this other stuff, but uh, I digress. I usually do. Uh, so let's uh, let's run this and let's reconfigure our server and you say, see up here, uh, we have changed our configuration option. Viva. Uh, it doesn't tell you that you ran reconfigure. It says run re the reconfigure statement to install. So, you know, done. But when you run reconfigure, it doesn't say like reconfigure complete or anything like that. It's just a just a silent yes. Um, 
I, I know that there's also a reconfigure with override uh, that you could do there, but that is um, that is if you want to set settings that SQL Server maybe doesn't agree with. So I would I would I would avoid using that uh, as a practice. Just just reconfigure like a normal person. But now if we go back and look at this, the results here. We are all set our value and value in use for our lovely, talented remote admin connections is set to one. All right, good stuff. Now, another thing that um, SP underscore pressure detector will tell you is it'll look to see if someone else out there connected to your SQL server may have possibly potentially uh, taken the dedicated admin connection. And the reason that's important is because only one person at a time can use the dedicated admin connection. Right? One at a time. Now, uh, some people, or, uh, I used to get some guff back when I used to like care about what people thought. Uh, they used to say things like, oh, it seems like a security risk. Well, it's, it's not. Uh, you can only use this connection if your login has sysadmin. And uh, quite frankly, uh, there's just not a whole lot more interesting you can do with the DAC than you could do if you already have sysadmin. Uh, I guess there's some stuff with like the, uh, the resource database you could do, but that's really not uh, all that interesting compared to what you can do if you're already a sysadmin. All right. Groove is in the heart, so they say. So, uh, oh, I got GitHub open. So I was doing some work on SP underscore Blitzlock today, making some improvements. Always improving. That's me. can tell them no, nothing, just always getting better at things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to really beat the crap out of my server. Uh, I've got two instances of SQL query stress open. And the reason I'm using two instances of SQL query stress instead of one instance of OStress is uh, I'm getting some weird ODBC errors from OStress that I just don't feel like figuring out right now. Uh, I'd rather record a video. Uh, I haven't recorded in a week because I was on vacation. I was in Paris, France. And, uh, you know, you just don't come back from France wanting to, f like, dig into ODBC errors. So, again, groove is in the heart. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you why you want the DAC when a server is having issues. And I've got this, you know, kind of crazy quirky query going on in here. And I'm just going to fire both of these off. And it's going to be, you know, kind of crappy. Like, I know this, these videos are supposed to be about SP underscore pressure detector. But, you know, even running SP underscore who is active has a tough time. And even just trying to open a new query window is having a really tough time generating a connection, which is no bueno, right? We're just going to say this is going to just, this will eventually time out, but I'm not going to sit there and make you watch it time out. That's just kind of cruel and unusual. But if I kill this, and uh, I'm going to try to cancel these. Sometimes this doesn't work as well as I'd like it to, but lo and behold, uh, you know, that, that worked out pretty well. And uh, one thing that I should show you here is that, uh, so SQL query stress has a default time of, I, th I think, 15 seconds. So uh, right here, you can see that there are like, you know, we, 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 we completed some, but there, you know, we had some exceptions as well. Rather, I think we just had all exceptions there. I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure how that's getting measured, but we had exceptions on both of these uh, equivalent to the number of iterations. So I think, I think we had a lot of stuff timing out trying to, trying to connect. And we only have 200 threads. So if we completed 178 and had 178 exceptions, that's twice as many as... <laughs> We could possibly have almost twice as many as uh, the threads that we have allocated here. So um, I don't know. Math is hard, my friends. Math is hard. So now let's uh, let's let's change things up a little bit. So uh, SP who was active barely got any of the way through. Ran for 23 seconds. Um, it, you're just gonna have to take my word for it on that one. I guess I could move uh, this way. There we go. And I could do a really careful zoom. And hopefully I don't 
catch any any weird nether regions over there and there we go there's our 23 seconds of waiting for who is active to return results when it didn't of course i killed it because you know the server is boned and i don't expect who i don't expect anything to be able to run when a server is really under a lot of cpu pressure like that because we need cpu threads to do things and we had like saturated the cpu threads on this one so what i'm going to do is show you a, a tiny itty bitty little shortcut very useful shortcut, a very useful engine, this is our Topham hat would say. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose connection and then I'm going to choose change connection. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use the SA account because that, that seems to be sensible. And then I'm going to come up to this line here where it says server name and uh, I'm going to add the word admin and I'm going to make me do it again, thanks SSMS. I'm going to add the word admin in here, admin colon SQL 2022, and I'm going to put in my password, no one look, all right, if you, if you, if you saw what I typed, please, please do your best to forget it, and I'm going to hit connect, now there used to be a funny bug in management studio where you would do the admin connection thing, and you would get an error message saying like it didn't work, but it did work, and we can validate that it worked. Again, I'm going to have to move to the side a little bit, and again, hopefully, uh, uh, you know what? I'm just going to do something. I'm going to do some clever navigating here, I hope, <laughs> or try to. Let's see. i got to go this way, and this thing has to go this way, and then we will eventually see, lo and behold, that we do have the admin connection here, right? So that's good. We have the admin, and SP who is active will work, of course, instantly, because uh, nothing's going on. Well, that's needless to say. But now let's come back over to SQL Query Stress, and let's fire these two bad dogs off again. And now with the remote admin connection, we get results back instantly. Right, we can run this a bunch of times. We'll get all the stuff back. We'll see that uh, we're supposed to have like, I mean, like under normal circumstances, because we have 200 threads from each of these going in, like we would like expect to see like, you know, 400 rows in there because queries are running. They're running for a long time. But under these circumstances, there are a whole bunch of queries that can't even get to the server to execute because we have the saturated worker threads all over the place. So I'm going to cancel these again before I set my nice laptop on fire. And we're going to close this one out uh, without ever actually having looked at SP pressure detector. This is going to be the importance of enabling the remote dedicated admin connection. So when your server is having problems, you don't have to worry about doing it, doing it then. <laughs> You'll be all set. You'll have your special SSMS login with the admin colon server name. You'll have everything ready to go, and you can fire up whatever tools, uh, scripts you care about to figure out what the heck is going on with your server and why CPU is at 10 million percent or whatever. Again, math is hard. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed yourselves um if you enjoyed if you if you did either you should like and subscribe if you did neither i don't know go get into my sequel who needs you that's how it's how i feel about it go watch some go watch some green screen hand puppet hand puppetry i guess uh <laughs> anyway uh Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to record some other SP pressure detector videos today. And uh, hopefully, uh, if, if you are not enlightened in the least by this one, you will find yourselves greatly enlightened by future videos. Or at least, I don't know, enthralled, amazed. My wife is texting me, so I'm going I'm to go pay attention to that for a minute. And uh, upload this video. So, uh, yeah, goodbye.